depending on a person's perspective, a glass is either half empty <laughs> or it's half full. And today on Bridges, we're gonna talk about aligning our perspectives with what really matters to the kingdom of God. Stay tuned, Bridges starts now. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter. I'm glad that you could join us for our conversation on perspective today. And my guest to help me talk about that has been on Bridges a couple of times before, author, speaker, T.C. Cannon. T.C., so good to have you again. Great to be here. I so enjoy your Facebook page and your posts. Thank you. <laughs> so many of them remind me, T.C., of really, you know, the right perspective and what's important. How did you kind of get into that kind of perspective about the long term rather than just how we look and if everything's okay? Yeah, well, it took many years of living in the wrong perspective mm -hmm. and the pain of that to bring me to a place in my life where I knew that I either needed to get a new perspective completely or just go to heaven because the pain of of what I was perceiving and what I was feeling on the inside was just becoming so unbearable. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say the pain, what do you mean? You were uh, emotionally upset about how you felt like you looked or comments that people made or what, what was it? Well, you know, basically, it, you know, as a Christian woman, I would read the Bible and I would read verses like, you know, you can do all things through Christ and um, that we were supposed to be having this abundant life. Yeah. But because of my perspective and what I was actually experiencing, I wasn't seeing that playing out in my life. There was a disparity between what I should be experiencing and what I was actually experiencing. And so that kind of created that emotional pain mm -hmm. and um, confusion, disappointment and a sense of failure. Mm -hmm on my part. Yeah. So you felt like you were a failure as a Christian believer because you because of your perspective you weren't having the abundant life. Right. And what was your perspective at the time? Well, my perspective was um you know, you know, I was thinking about the definition of perspective to explain yeah. this and that it really is just kind of a point of view from the position you're in. And because of the position I was in, my point of view, I was only looking at basically what the world saw and the reflection of myself in the world's eyes. Mm -hmm. And that was my perspective. And, and I, wasn't, I wasn't lining up um, physically, especially. And, um, and I wasn't lining up to what I was reading in the Bible <laughs> either. So I felt just, and, and I know now it was because of the position I was in, mm -hmm. which was not my rightful position as a daughter of the king. Amen. Amen. And I think sometimes, T.C., we don't see that as Christian believers, even in the church, uh, even other Christian believers, women, they're in, in kind of the same situation that you and I have both been in, that our perspective is really affected by how we think we look or we think we don't look or what this world says to us about how much we weigh. I, I, I mean, th there have been so many times in my life that I've had a better day because I stepped on the scale and it was a couple of pounds lighter. And right. I'm sure that everybody in the world knows. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they can see those two they can pounds. See that. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh because it's ridiculous, Yeah. but I've stayed home and not gone to events because I felt that I looked fat in everything that I wore mm -hmm. or my clothes were too tight. And looking back now that I have a different perspective, I feel really badly about missed opportunities and the example um, that I set for anybody that was around me and especially for young girls about really what being a healthy Christian woman is about. Right, well, you're definitely not alone in that because I can remember, I mean, not even going to church, yeah. um, skipping a Bible study, uh, <laughs> places where your perspective <laughs> is supposed to be about the kingdom of God, but I wouldn't go because my perspective was focused on, like you said, my pants are tight today or I can't find anything in the closet that fits. And so stay home pull the covers up over my head and yeah. miss out on not only what God could have had for me, but how he could have used me as a vessel of love for someone who was hurting. Yeah. And I think that that's a part of the, the perspective that we all need to hone in on is that 
God's given such great value to each of us. Yes. And, and there's not just, I don't think, one purpose for all of our lives. There are many purposes. And God wants us to be a blessing to the people around us and to right. encourage. Mm -hmm. And if I'm trapped in what I look like and how much I weigh and the comments that people make to me, yeah. I'm not fulfilling any of those purposes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, TC, for a long time, I lived in that kind of a place. Yeah. And, you know, people would feel like they could just walk right up to me and say, oh, you've gained weight or... <laughs> You know, oh and, and I would cry and I would get all like, it, well, what did they mean by that? And how much weight do they think <laughs> that I've gained? And, you know, it's only five pounds and they can see that. I've got to explain to them I'm only 5'3". And, you know, right. um, it's crazy talk. And what I hope that we can do today is expose that for the deception that it is mm -hmm. and help all of you Christian women and men that are watching today to understand that there's life beyond this physical perspective. We're not just this. And while I do think it's important to, you know, eat healthy and be good to ourselves, right. I don't, TC, see a lot of scriptures focusing on what we look like. Right, I've actually done a search <laughs> with my Bible <laughs> software for anything relating to calories, um, body mass index, <laughs> uh, you know, any even appropriate weight that, you know, God forgot to put that in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Thou shalt not weigh more than, yeah. um, I don't, in fact, most of the scriptures you find about beauty are related to the heart. Yeah. And I, I, I just don't even see, and even Jesus was said to not be any man that you would ever look twice exactly. at. Exactly. So outward appearance must not be important at all to God if he chose to come as an, you know, not unattra you know, not attractive it's, it says man. that it right, says that he say was that. nothing to look at right and yet people were drawn to him right the masses were drawn to him it has to be out of his relationship with god the love the character mm -hmm. the compassion and these are things that you and i as christian believers need to be praying about and aspiring toward. You know, I think sometimes, TC, when people invite me to come and speak and share my weight loss story, you know, we act like that's the biggest thing I've ever done. <laughs> you know, when in fact, I've really fought huge battles of faith in my life. Right. I've forgiven betrayals that on my own I couldn't have done. Learned to forgive people that I could just be mad at for 10 forevers. Yeah. But we're not applauding that. We're applauding mm -hmm. this. And right. the perspective is wrong. I, I would go so far to say is that perspective is carnal, don't you think? Oh, well, it's obviously carnal. And I've, I have thought the very same thing. I, you know, you'll, even in church, yeah. if someone walks in having lost a few pounds, you'd think that they need to roll out the red carpet. Exactly. Like, oh my gosh, you've, have you lost weight? <laughs> As if that's the grandest accomplishment and you've suddenly arrived amongst those who can be considered worthy. You know, you've lost exactly. weight, finally. Yes. Well, what it sets you up for is realizing what are they going to think of me when I gain it back? <laughs> exactly. What did you think about me last month before I lost this weight? And, and, and you just, you, and I wish we could be looking at each other for those, those things like, oh my gosh, you've really overcome bitterness. Amen. Haven't you? Mm -hmm. you? I can see it on your countenance mm -hmm. that you have forgiven someone. That's right. What, wouldn't that be great mm -hmm. if we could just start recognizing that in each other? Yeah, and encouraging that in one another. And yeah. I know um, I started out um, a couple of years ago on a new prayer. You know, I, I used to pray sometimes, TC, I'm ashamed to admit it. Oh, God, help me lose weight and help me do... Oh, you hey, know? I've been there. I, you don't have to be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I was looking in the uh, book of uh, Peter, and it talked about that a, a, a beautiful woman in God is one with a pure and a gentle spirit. Mm. And I started praying to that end, that inwardly, that I would have a pure and a gentle spirit so that God would find my spirit beautiful. Right. And that hopefully those that look at my life and that I interact with would see that. Yeah. And I think... That's where we need to move as Christian women. And I don't have any daughters, but for a long time, I was almost glad that I didn't because I thought if they had to get that example of body image and frustration from me, 
they would have been in a world of hurt until recently as I'm healing from mm -hmm. all of that. But I, I feel like that's what we need to pray and develop, don't you? I do, and because um, it goes right along with praying that we would, we would be positionally healed. Because mm -hmm. when we're talking about that definition of perspective, yeah. it has everything to do with our position. Mm -hmm. And for me, a big part of having my perspective changed was my position changing. And, find, and what I mean by that is like Jesus, we were talking about him mm -hmm. a minute ago, his relationship to the Father and all the miracles and the power he walked in, it was because positionally he was a son and he related as a, to his Father. And for, for, for us as women, when we can finally positionally sit as daughters of a king, the perspective from that, that spot yeah. is way different than the perspective of just an unworthy little fat girl or an unworthy little girl with skinny arms and buck teeth or yeah. whatever it may be that we're battling. Yeah. The position, the perspective changes immediately. Yeah, because you know, part of the deception about that really carnal perspective is it doesn't matter if you really view yourself as a little fat girl. I, I heard a, a girl on Saturday share how awkward she felt about herself because she was the tallest, skinniest girl mm -hmm. in elementary school. So her life was shaped by that perspective right. and that being a negative thing and the comments that people made, she wasn't viewing herself as a daughter of the king. She was right. looking at herself as this tall, skinny, unworthy little girl. Right. And, um, you know, it, it, I am always blown away by the women I talk with and speak to. It doesn't, you would look at some of the women in the classes that I've taught and think, what do you have to feel bad about? <laughs> you are the perfect ideal. Exactly. But they're battling the same inner critics, mm -hmm. um, That's which right. shows that the perspective is, it's the world we're living in. That's and right. we've got to set our sights on something higher. We've got to change it. We've got to take mm -hmm. a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you would like to order a copy of today's Bridges episode, call 615-754-0039. Be sure to mention the program number on your screen. For information on today's guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Visit www.facebook.com today and add Bridges Show as a friend. If you are just joining us today on Bridges, my guest is T.C. Cannon. We are talking about perspective. T.C. is a speaker, an author, and her latest book is My Big Bottom Blessing, How Hating My Body Led to Loving My Life, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because one of the things that you said that really uh, stuck out to me was that you said you quit fighting with the mirror, you made up with it, and mm -hmm. you now love what you see. Right. And that's a great perspective. It is. And, you know, it took me a while to learn that all those years I was so desperate to change how I look, God was really desperate to change how I see. Amen. That That's what he wants for us. He wants to change our perspective. And he can. Mm -hmm. um, he's still healing the blind, yeah. giving giving sight to the blind. That's how I, I feel um, that's what I feel happened to me as blinders were lifted yeah. and my perspective changed. Yeah. Because we are blinded, I believe, by the messages from the world and that are repeated by the church because the, we've accepted that right. as Christian believers that this is how the, a woman needs to look. This is what your body mass index must be. Right. And, and it's taken a little step further on the part of some Christian believers that somehow we're holier, more spiritual or more fit uh, to do God's work if we're thinner and healthier. And again, I don't see that repeated anywhere in the Bible. Right. I, I don't. I don't see that message, and I think if it would have been that important, it'd be somewhere. Right, I agree. Um, you know, we do see scripture about that we are, this is our temple, Amen. this is the temple of mm -hmm. God, and and I agree. If if God is dwelling in me, I want him to have of a good course, dwelling place, yes. but, but the definition of that 
isn't really clear. And so for me, I know healthy matters. Yes. I know that God is not pleased with us having food as a God. Absolutely. You know, gluttony is a sin, mm -hmm. a lifestyle of continual gluttony. I don't think every now and then having too many cookies is I don't, you know, what we're talking a about. Not a glutton. We're talking about a lifestyle. So, you know, we do see those things clearly, mm -hmm. but as far as the specifics of what our temple is supposed to look like, mm -hmm. I don't see that in there. I don't either. And I think, you know, I agree with you that some, you know, making it a religious statement or looking at someone from what they, how much they weigh and determining their spiritual maturity yeah. <clears throat> seems like a real <laughs> step in the wrong direction. Well, it's dangerous. Yes. Uh, because for so many reasons, because all of our metabolisms work differently. So right. it would be perfectly possible for a person to uh, weigh the, what's viewed as the right amount and eat nonstop. Right. Because their metabolism like is husband. just so quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, and 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 it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's so not fair. But but well, our size doesn't always reflect how much or how little really that we're eating. And right. then some people could be a normal weight, and they might really have an eating issue of binging and purging, and they might exactly. or somebody might be living a lifestyle of gluttony, but taking meds or working out real hard to combat that. So if we look at them, they look like a right weight. So to judge people by how we look when God clearly says he doesn't judge by the outward appearance, but by the heart, we're on the wrong track. Right. And you can't judge how healthy someone is. I just recently, <laughs> no. not this year, but last year, ran the Music City Half Marathon. Congratulations. At basically this size. Awesome. And you know, my medical workup, my blood work, all would say I'm totally healthy. Amen. You could look at someone who would be considered really thin. Mm -hmm. They might not even be able to run a mile and they could have horrible cholesterol. You Absolutely. Know I mean? you just, health, health needs to be the standard. Right. Health. Right. Mental, I, I, emotional, I, I, and physical. I know a couple of people who are really thin, they cannot climb, you know, three to four flights of stairs without right. getting winded. Right. That's not healthy. People would think that they're really thin, right. but it's certainly not healthy. And you mentioned before the break, TC, that you teach some classes and I would like to hear about that. I, I think that part of what I want us to, to look at in perspective is we've been trained in the world's perspective. Right. Whether we want to believe it or not, it, we haven't gone to classes, but I mean, we have gotten the message mm -hmm. through family members, through commercials, through TV, through media, through magazines of what a, a woman needs to look like. Right. What we need to weigh. And I'm thinking now maybe we need some classes to change that perspective. Right. So tell me about the classes that you teach. Yeah, well right now I'm just I'm leading a, a seven week Bible study mm -hmm. that kind of goes along with the book I wrote. Mm -hmm. And we've got about 40 or 50 women coming and like I mentioned just battling the craziest lies that you would just grieve you mm -hmm. if you I had them anonymously write down some of the thoughts that they battle mm -hmm. and I just wept because I know it is so it has to just grieve God who doesn't see them that way at all. Mm -hmm. And because that perspective, those, those lies they're believing is keeping each and every woman individually. Um, like you mentioned earlier, there's a purpose for each and every one of yes. us individually, not just as humanity. Right. But um, these lies are keeping them, this perspective that they have of themselves is keeping them from walking in victory, hope, freedom, and so the class is just designed to kind of step by step begin to dig out some of those lies that have that are clinging to the lies of this world mm -hmm. and affecting the way we're living our lives. Yeah. And causing us to stop short. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm thinking about my inner critic and allowing that, then I'm not doing much thinking about other people being kind, reaching out. I'm thinking about how to fix all of this right. and how to get other people to believe or think certain things about me. Right. And it really is a very self-involved, you know, that's the whole thing. You, yes, our bodies are the temple and we're to value them and care for them, but making the temple an idol, mm -hmm. you know, where we're working out to the point or so frequently that we're not getting adequate rest or cleaning our home or having fun with our family. Right. That's an obsession. And what it does to us as well, uh, if we are so um, consumed with what a failure we are or concerned with our own temple or body, we are forced to kind of tear each other down. Because yeah. if I feel short, 
in order to make myself feel taller, I, I'm gonna cut your legs off. Mm -hmm. If I can't make myself taller, I'm gonna try to make you shorter. Yeah. And we just end up, you know, comparing ourselves to each other all the time instead of being the body that we're supposed to be, the body of Christ, lifting each other, encouraging each other. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really keeps us from truly being loving, yeah. which the Bible says that the world will know us by our love. That's right. And so this, this perspective about our body, even though we might think it's silly, um, no, I just, I'm just feeling fat today. That's all. It's not effect <laughs> no, it's affecting everything. Yeah, it's it is. affecting your witness. Mm -hmm. It's affecting um, really just everything. Well, it is, and it affects us being able to be in relationship totally. with people. You know, I, I, I was thinking about from my husband's perspective, the many years that I would put on an outfit and he would say, Monica, you look pretty. And I would say, no, I don't. I right. look fat. Yeah. And, or no, I don't. It, this makes me look fat or any number of comments. And one day he said, you know, <laughs> I just might as well not say anything. Right. And I thought, see, it does affect relationship because mm -hmm. here's someone trying to give affection, be in relationship, be supportive. And I'm cutting it off at the past because of my inner critic, because I can't believe or accept that mm -hmm. he would feel that way because gosh, doesn't he know that according to the world standards, <laughs> I weigh more than I'm supposed to. Right, and you know who else, I mean, what you just said just is so uh, true because what he's feeling like is you're calling him a liar. Yeah. We do the same thing to God. Oh. Every single day when we wake up, God is pouring affirmation upon us. His word is filled with the truth of what he feels, what he sees in us. Mm -hmm. And we just go, no, I'm fat. Or no, don't you see that I have too many crow's feet? We call God a liar every day yeah. when we don't line up with what he's saying mm -hmm. about us. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. So just what are you doing to your husband? <laughs> Magnify it. That's what we're all doing to mm -hmm. God. I remember doing that to my mom too. It's the people that love you the most. You call them a lie. I'm not pretty. Your mom would always say, you're so beautiful. No, I'm not. You're you only know. saying that because you're yeah, my you mom. you have to tell me that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, I had just, as I thought about that, I thought, you know, that affects relationships. Mm -hmm. The ability to give and receive love. Right. And you know, really, if TC, if I'm that caught up about how ugly I am or how fat I am, I'm not really wanting to be true friends with any girlfriend either because I'm thinking about me and how to make myself better and I don't believe any compliment that I might get right. or a sign of affection and a friendship. Right. So it does stop us short. It does. And I was thinking earlier too that, you know, the reason we have this, our, the perspective we have of ourselves, or when we, we're thinking these negative things is, is because of the opinion we value. Yeah. Um, when you get right down to it, there's two perspectives that matter the one we have and the one we value. And what we're seeing in our culture and even in the church is that we are valuing the, the world's perspective. Yeah. We're valuing the perspective of Vogue magazine or People uh -huh. magazine. That's what we're choosing to value when we should be valuing the perspective of our Heavenly Father. Yes. And so for me, it's realizing, okay, every day I have a choice to line myself up positionally where I'm supposed to be so I'm looking the view I see is correct, but also remembering whose perspective matters. Amen. You know, that's such a good point. Uh, if we can remind ourselves that the perspective about, is about who matters, what is most important. Because I, right. I noticed the, you know how sometimes you just catch a reflection of yourself in mm -hmm. them. And, and it, my husband and I were on that Music City train going downtown and I caught a reflection of myself and it just really showed that, you know, I was getting older and I thought, I can't stand this. I'm so <laughs> ugly. And immediately I felt like, no, I can't go there. Mm -hmm. God made me in his image. I'm beautiful. It's okay that I'm getting older. It's, it's okay. That's just the message of the world that right. we're not allowed to get older. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm seeing then is that retraining or renewing our minds is possible. Yes. And I wanted to ask you because you've been victorious in this battle. 
What does healing look like? What does a woman do who's watching right now, TC, who's been as caught up in herself as you and I have been and maybe thought bad thoughts and passed on bad examples to any daughters that might be in the family? How does healing start? Right. Well, it is a journey, mm -hmm. so it's not something I could say, hey, the three easy steps right, exactly. to changing your perspective <laughs> forever. But, for you know, it, it does start with being willing to, to acknowledge your perspective needs healing. Amen. You know, admitting that we need healing is the first step. Yeah, so kind of um, giving up that the world is right. Right. And, okay. and, and becoming, getting sick and tired of being sick and tired, really, yeah. you know, it's kind yes. of a silly phrase, but being sick of the same old loop that has played over and yeah. over and saying, mm -hmm. okay, Father, take me where you need to take me and being willing. Um, for me, that required being willing to not lose weight for a while mm -hmm. while inner work yes. was done. And that was tough because when you're desperate to lose weight and that's your biggest prayer, mm -hmm. can't you just speed up my metabolism? That's you right. know, you parted the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. You can surely do something with my genes. Yes, that's how you I know? felt like, yeah, for lots of years. Um, <laughs> but being willing to set that prayer aside mm -hmm. and say, okay, obviously I'm missing the mark on what I'm praying for. Can you go into my heart? Mm -hmm. And then it was, you know, for me, it's a journey and I wrote a lot about it in detail in the mm -hmm. book. But, but, being willing to see God correctly, because most of us really don't. No, we don't. We see him as some grand disciplinarian in the sky, waiting to point out everything we're doing wrong, when really, he, it, you know, he's the one who has this huge inheritance for us that he's just pouring on us and we're resisting it. That's right. And he wants to share everything that he has and who he is with us. He just wants to be in relationship. Right. And we've judged him so incorrectly we think right. he's so mad at us, and he just, he loves us. I want to thank you so much, TC, for coming yeah, today. Thank you for, for having sharing. me. It has been wonderful. If you'd like to get more information, we welcome you to go to our website, take a look, and to visit it. Our website is ctntv.org, and we'll be back with closing comments in just a moment right here on Bridges. For information on today's guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. If you would like to order a copy of today's Bridges episode, call 615-754-0039. Be sure to mention the program number on your screen. In the interview today, we talked about perspective. And perspective really is about what we think, what we value, the lens at which we look at things and through things. And the perspective that all of us need to have as believers is God's perspective. And that really means trading the message and the perspective of this world and saying that the world's perspective and message is incorrect and that the message that's correct and the message that we value is God's perspective. And when it comes to who we are and what we look like, God's perspective is that every last one of us are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are made in the image of God and that for that reason, we have great value and that great dignity and respect belongs to us. Our position as daughters or sons of the King is a high position and means that we have access to who our Father is and to what He has by reading His Word and by praying. So I challenge you, to give up the message of the world that says we're too fat, we're too skinny, we're not good enough, we need to work harder, try harder. Let's stop valuing and cherishing that. And let's start to value, treasure, and cherish God's perspective. We are out of time, we gotta go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. Thanks for watching Bridges.